Hello everyone, thank you for coming. We are the Sea Turtle Ecology Group and today we will be discussing the abundance and distribution of juvenile green sea turtles, also known as Cholonia mitis, around southern Eleuthera. We are co-advised by Loretta Lila and Luke Sumquist. I am Doris Gassick. I'm Ian Connolly. I'm Emma Springs. I'm Aaron Bogan. I'm Samantha Lindeen. And I'm Nick Giordano. So sea turtles have been classified as an endangered species since the early 70s. Extinction of them would cause an unbalance in the marine ecosystem, primarily with seagrass. The seagrass relies on the sea turtles in order to be grazed and maintained properly. Without the sea turtles, the seagrass would overgrow and eventually die in its own shading. However, if there are too many sea turtles, then the sea turtles would graze the seagrass and eventually die as well. We decided to primarily focus on the study because there is not much known about juvenile green sea turtles, um, and more specifically around southern Eleuthera. Rather, there is much more known about nesting females. Human interactions have caused a significant decline in turtle in abund abundance. Human interactions include bycatch, coastal development, habitat degradation, and even nesting. Um, though the Bahamian national government took action into making uh, harvesting of sea green sea turtles illegal, it still does occur in some small areas. Shark predation has affected uh, the area as to where turtles forage. Juvenile turtles are more likely to stay in open creeks rather than in open oceans. The reason being is because there is more seagrass in the creeks and there are a lesser amount of predators. So the purpose of our study was to find the relative abundance and size distribution of green sea turtles in southern Eleuthera, as well as to find the relative abundance of sharks and their effect on green sea turtles. Our study sites included two on the Atlantic side, Winding Bay and Half Sound. These tended to be more expansive and deeper creeks. And then three on the Exuma uh, Sound, Plum Creek, Deep Creek, and Rollins Creek. Uh, these were more uh, ma mangroves and with um, channels that ran through them. On the Bahama Banks, we had Starve Creek, Poison Creek, Broad Creek, and Kemp's Creek. These uh, creeks tend to be also expansive, but more shallow. Our methods included abundance surveys. Um, this was used to find the relative abundance of the uh, turtles. The rodeo method, um, which was used to find the, um, the measurements and to tag turtles. And then BROVs, which is beta remote underwater video surveys, which is used to find the relative abundance of sharks. For the abundance survey, uh, a group of researchers will line the perimeter of a motorboat. Once in the creek, a GPS location will be taken, and the boat will start on a transect for 30 minutes. If a turtle is spotted, um, the boat will go over to um, the turtle um, and identify whether it is a turtle or not. Uh, and then at the end of the transect, another GPS location will be taken. Another method used is the rodeo technique. Uh, once a turtle is spotted, the boat will chase after the turtle until the turtle gets tired, and then a swimmer will jump in to catch the turtle and bring it back to the boat to take measurements. Uh, measurements are taken on the turtle's body, head, and weight. And then in this study, we use the curved carapace length to compare the different sizes of turtles in each creek, which goes from the tip of the neck where it reaches the head all the way to the opposite end. Uh, another method used is the BROVS, which stands for Beta Remote Underwater Video Survey. This consists of a cement block with a camera on top and then a pole attached with a frozen bait on the opposite end, as you can see in the bottom right picture. Um, we set these out in the mouth of the creek at a high outgoing tide in order for the bait plume to disperse. Um, after 90 to 120 minutes, we retrieve the film and review it. And we can use this data to compare the different types of predators um, to the abundance of sea turtles in each creek. So using the data gathered in the uh, abundance surveys, we were um, gathered in from 2014 to 2016, totaling 126 hours. Uh, we were able to conclude that there was a significant, a significant difference among the creeks using the Kruskal-Wallis test, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Now, as you can see in this graph, on the y-axis, we have turtles per hour, which is a unit of, which is a measurement of catch per unit effort. 
and on the x-axis we have each individual creek grouped by coastline. So um, in red is the Atlantic coastline, which here represents half sound. In green we have the Exuma Sound coastline, which represents Rollins Creek, Deep Creek, and Plum Creek. And then in the light blue we have the Bahama Banks coastline, which represents Starved Creek, Poison Creek, Broad Creek, and Kent's Creek. And what's interesting about this graph is that half sound had more than twice the relative abundance of the next highest creek, which was Rollins. And also, uh, Atlantic, the Atlantic coastline had the highest relative abundance compared to Exuma Sound coastline and Bahama Banks coastline, which each followed. And in the Bahama Banks coastline, Broad Creek and Kemp's Creek stick out because both of them had a catch per unit effort of less than one turtle per hour. Using the data gathered in the Shark Broad Service um, from 2015 to 2016, totaling 407 hours, we were also able to conclude that there was a significant difference between creeks using the Kruskal Wallace test. The p-value was less than 0 0.05. So on the y-axis again, sharks per hour, which is a measurement of catch per unit effort, and on the x-axis, each individual creek grouped by coastline. So what's interesting about this graph is that Broad Creek has the highest relative abundance of sharks with 0 0.34 sharks per hour, and Kemp's Creek had the lowest relative abundance of sharks of 0 0.09 sharks per hour. This table represents the abundance of different shark species all years and locations combined. Specifically, it represents how many times a shark is seen on a screen at one time. Only counting how many sharks are seen on a screen at one time is usually zero, is usually one or zero, because you don't want to overestimate the number of sharks seen at one time. Then it gets added up for all years combined to get the max amount of sharks. The nurse shark is most frequently seen, followed by the Caribbean reef and black tip shark. Uh, however, the shark species that are most likely to predate on sea turtles are bull, tiger, and lemon sharks. Bull sharks are not observed in the creeks. Lemon is occasionally seen as well as tiger sharks. Although it doesn't show in the data set, it has been observed in the field, but not on our BRUV surveys. <coughs> the differences in size of coastlines was studied using data collected from 2011 to 2016. The measurement used is curved carapace length. There was a significant difference between the size of the coastlines. This graph represents the mean size of the coastlines across all years combined. The sample size varies between each coastline. Uh, the Atlantic is in red, which represents half sound in Winding Bay. The Bahama Banks is in blue, and the Exuma Sound is in green. The Atlantic has the smallest turtles with a mean size of 341 millimeters. The Bahama Banks has the largest turtles with a mean size of 481 millimeters. And the Exuma Sound side is right in the middle with a, a mean size of 371 millimeters. It's important to take into account that the, co that the the coastlines vary between, sorry, that the sample sizes vary between each coastline. Overall, the Atlantic coastline has turtles in, bo in both extremes, really, in both like really small and large sizes. The Bahama Banks has turtles with extremes being completely large size turtles, and the Exumas are lacking the extremes with a smaller range of val smaller range of values. Uh, so overall, our results yielded a number of interesting findings. The first of which, first of which being that um, we found on the Atlantic coastline there was not only the largest abundance of turtles, but the turtles there were on average the smallest of the turtles. So this actually um, supports one of our main theories that after the turtles are completing their free-flowing life stage, in which they float around in the currents of major gyres around the world. They're then recruiting into uh, the Atlantic coastline, and this would make perfect sense. As uh, you can see on the map, the North Atlantic Gyre, uh, the currents pass straight through the Bahamas, which would take these turtles into the Atlantic coastline. And um, in the future, we would like to look into whether, uh, as these turtles grow and mature, uh, whether they travel along the southern end of Eleuthera from the Atlantic coastline and then go up to the Bahama Bank side, where we observe mostly the larger turtles. So uh, as well as this, we also found that there was no correlation between turtle abundance and shark abundance in each creek. However, we believe that this could be due to uh, a number of factors such as 
Uh, there are different sampling sizes, uh, as well as factors in each creek, such as uh, temperature, depth, seagrass productivity, um, and others such as that. So um, although uh, there is no significant correlation, we still believe that the shark species could be affecting this. If you look at the graph, um, you can see uh, creeks such as Kemp's is why we believe there is no correlation. As uh, when we ran the test, we went through all the creeks, and Kemp's has uh, zero or very low amount of sharks and very low amount of turtles. However, um, in creeks such as Broad Creek, you can clearly see a predator-prey inverse relationship in which we observed uh, many sharks in Broad Creek and a very low amount of turtles in Broad Creek. Here we see a nurse shark on the left side and a tiger shark on the right side. The nurse shark is the uh, most abundant shark that we observed. However, it's one of the least likely to be actually predating on the turtles, whereas the sh uh, tiger shark uh, was one of the least abundant, however, is the most likely to be predating on turtles. Uh, we have a hypothesis, however, that the turtles could still associate uh, uh, nurse sharks with danger, even though they're not predating on them, which still could be affecting the, those turtles' uh, behavior and abundance in each creek. So in the future, we would like to look into how different types of shark species affect the turtles' behavior. So overall, uh, ju uh, juvenile green sea turtles are incredibly critical to their environment. However, um, they face many threats, including uh, natural predators, um, human poaching, uh, climate change, coastal development, habitat decline. Uh, also, we, uh, we believe that sharks could be affecting their behavior and abundance in all of the creeks. And um, we're really hoping that this study and our future studies will help shape the way that uh, turtle conservation is, uh, efforts are put forth. All right, uh, we would like to thank Annabelle Brooks for all her help, as well as the rest of the turtle team, the rest of CEI, and the Boathouse staff for all they've done. Thank you. Are there any questions? So the question was whether uh, these turtles travel uh, over a large distance. Um, so in the juvenile stage, um, after hatching, they are um, caught in these gyres, like we mentioned before. But um, they do tend, in the ju juvenile stage, they tend to stay in the creeks that they're in. Um, they're sometimes pulled out with the tide, um, and therefore that's our um, hypothesis that they're traveling down um, the southern uh, tip of Eleuthera. Um, but they generally tend to stay in these creeks that um, they end up in as hatchlings. So the, uh, the question was if we had a hypothesis on why we didn't find uh, turtles or sharks in uh, Kemp's Creek, is that correct? Okay, so um, when we do our abundance surveys in Kemp's Creek, one, that, one thing that we often notice is the lack of um, seagrass in that area, which is a main food source, uh, as you've learned, for the turtles. And, um, and as that, here, let me find that picture. Um, one second. early picture right here um, with the seagrass if there's no seagrass at all then there wouldn't be a reason for the turtles to be there and if we're assuming that the sharks that were there were were predatory to the turtles there would also be a reason why the sharks wouldn't be there if there were no nutrients for them so it's all really connected